Hey, great friends. What's happening? It is Tuesday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew. You know, we're doing shorter shows this week because of the World Series. And then yesterday, the World Series got rained out and got postponed. We'll talk about that coming up in just a matter of moments. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. And I ask all great friends who watch on YouTube, who listen on radio, who listen on audio podcast, who watch on cable TV, I ask everybody to please support our sponsors. And in this case, Seven Mile Casino, meaning if you're going to play blackjack or poker, the first place you should think of is Seven Mile Casino. Why? Because it's the closest place to go. It's seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. You don't need to schlep 45 minutes east. You don't need to schlep two hours out into the desert. It's seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. And not only is it a smoke-free environment, which makes it so nice, the air is clean, you can breathe, all right? You don't walk out smelling like a cigarette. The other part of it is Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza, right there in Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Good luck. You are a winner at Seven Mile Casino. And, Browner, we're in the middle of spots. Maybe you could mute your mic, maybe. No, can't mute your mic. No. What? We know who's listening what? to something. <laughs> You're on the wrong mic. You're mute. You're you're playing your phone yeah, all we're loud. In the spots. Don't mind us. <laughs> Who? Us. Y'all talking to me? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Could hear your video. All right. There you go. Thank you. Yo. Yeah. For sure. I'm leave this all in. Hundred percent. Seven Mile Casino. Seven Mile Casino. And then they're looking at what? Hands up. Hands up. What? 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 Yeah, what, what? What? what did what? I do? What? what did I do? What? 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 Hilarious. All right. Uh, hey, by the way, if you have any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's why we don't text until right, we're done. Exactly. Normally, we don't text you until we're ready for you. All right. Hey, listen, let me uh, let me mention a bunch of other sponsors here. Here goes. Um, first of all, you have heard me talk about Mazda of Escondido for the last year and change. I've had a great experience at Mazda of Escondido. I have three cars from Mazda. However, Mazda of Escondido is actually owned by Penske. Um, and the thing about Penske is Browner and I did that appearance at Lexus of San Diego. We had a great experience there. And then... Somebody at Penske went, well, why are we only talking about Mazda on Kaplan and crew when we could be talking about all the different Penske dealerships in San Diego? So here's the thing. Uh, PenskeSanDiego.com is the website. That's where you should go to shop all of the different brands. And here are the brands. Acura. So I guess what I'm getting at is Mazdas are great, but not everybody wants a Mazda. Listen to this. Acura, Audi, BMW, Honda, Lexus, Mini, Mazda, obviously, Mercedes, and Toyota, 12 big San Diego area dealerships all here to serve you, the great friends. And if you want to look at any of these vehicles from any of these brands, PenskeSanDiego.com. That's Penske, P-E-N-S-K-E, PenskeSanDiego.com. Shop there. Shop PenskeSanDiego.com. Hey, shout out to our people from Tory Holistics, Tory Holistics up north in Sorrento Valleys. Um, California Holistics down south in Chula Vista. And today, being November 1st, Alex, new promo code. What do you say? Got your back. Got your back. Got your back. All lower cap. Got your back. Is uh, Did Ruthie happen to say why? I mean, like boobies was, you know, October, breast cancer awareness, whatever. Mm -hmm. Got your back mean anything? I didn't uh, okay. ask her. All right. Got your back. <laughs> Tori Holistics is up north. California Holistics is down south, Sorrento Valley, Chula Vista. There's lots of places around San Diego to buy your favorite cannabis brands and products, whether it's for pain, for sleep, for recreation, whatever the case may be. But Tory Holistics and California Holistics, they work with the show. So we ask that you support them as well. And you save 20% when you spend $75 or more. The promo code is got your back. Okay. Um, talk to me, Alex. Uh, today is Tuesday. So that means another injection the last one before mm -hmm. your wedding this upcoming Sunday from iThrive. And yesterday you told us you're down 14 total pounds. Is that right? Yes. Uh, yesterday, 14. I didn't weigh today, but I did take the injection today. Mm -hmm. uh, I did notice the dosage went up a little bit. And I think that might have like kind of fast-tracked a little bit of the weight loss last week. So I um, did the injection today and feeling great. All right. Hey, if you're looking to lose weight and you can't change your diet because you don't have the discipline, you can't increase your exercise because you don't like to exercise, or maybe you physically can't do it, whatever the case may be. Um, I had a buddy of mine who just took off from Hawaii for Hawaii, and this guy's been on it for the last eight weeks, and he's also down like 12 pounds, and he's feeling great. He's going on vacation. He's feeling better about himself, 
and he's not going to eat nearly as much. Not going to cost as much money. Um, iThriveMD.com or go to our website, KaplanandCrew.com. Click on iThrive. It'll take you directly there. And uh, it is all FDA approved and guaranteed to lose weight. So iThriveMD.com. All right, guys, um, let's start the show. All right, great friends. What's happening? It's Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Just getting onto the airwaves of 1090. Just getting onto the stream of YouTube. Hey, to everybody that's just getting involved in YouTube, get involved in the YouTube live chat. We love talking to you throughout the show. So make sure you're involved in the YouTube live chat and continue to subscribe on YouTube because I've got a very, um, I don't know, it's just not really that aggressive, but I've got a goal of trying to get us to 7,500 subscribers by the end of the year. And I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but go ask all of our colleagues around town how many subscribers they've got on their YouTube channel. And you know what they'll tell you? I don't have a YouTube channel. Big mistake. So help us get to 7,500 by the end of the year. Next year, we'll double it. All right, we're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. I got Grande and Brown Man. And yet again, an abbreviated broadcast on radio today, which just reminds me at the very beginning of today's broadcast to tell you, for those of you that listen on radio, you should come to YouTube because when we get done on radio, we got a whole separate deal going on YouTube. And um, that's where we, uh, we speak the way we really speak off air, you know, cause like on air, you got to watch your mouth, you know what I mean? But like off air on YouTube, on podcasts exclusively, all I'm saying is you should come by today and be part of the YouTube finish and the finale of today's show. Grande Brown, man. Good afternoon, guys. We, we had an abbreviated broadcast yesterday because we decided to air the World Series here on 1090. And then yesterday, the World Series, due to weather, gets postponed. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what are we doing on 1090 right now? Because we only gave you an hour. So, um, Alex, can you kind of reset what Major League Baseball has decided to do with the World Series for us? Yeah, Major League Baseball has just redone the entire remaining schedule. So they will play Game 3 tonight, Game 4 tomorrow and game five on Thursday, because today is Tuesday. So now the off day becomes Friday, and now the entire reason why they didn't give the NLCS a day off after that Sunday game, or at least it was scheduled if it would have gone game six, was to not play a game on Sunday against the NFL, and now they are. The World Series, game seven, if it happens, will be Sunday, November 6th. And you know what I'm thinking? Tell me. Well, I dodged a bullet there if that would have gone Padres Game 7 World Series. But uh, yes, so today, tomorrow, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, if necessary. So that changes our whole week again because we thought yeah. we were going to have abbreviated shows on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Correct. And then a full show on Thursday. Mm -hmm. But because 1090 has decided to air these ESPN presentations of the World Series, now you're telling me we're going to have an abbreviated show yesterday, which got rained out. Yes, yes. Shorter show today, shorter show tomorrow, then another short show on Thursday. Correct. And then on Friday, we actually are, we're off on Friday, aren't we? Yes. Because you are doing wedding prep for Sunday and I got to go deal with like, you know, family. Right. Stuff, so we were supposed divorce, to have a full whatever. show on Thursday. That's been scrapped. Now we will do another abbreviated one hour show on Thursday. Wow. Wow. Bronner, how you feel about all these abbreviated broadcasts? Uh, you know, again, if we have something that we can use, we should use it to flex the power of the station. Uh, other than that, you know, I mean, we're missing some news, but nothing that we can't crush into a couple of minutes. Speaking okay, well, let's, news. yeah, speaking of news, let, let's do this. I, a couple <laughs> of things. Let, let me say this. I've received a lot of people who have asked me on Twitter because on Friday of last week, I told everybody that I was going to a lunch with Landon Donovan and that was the same. Did I drop? Oh, last Friday you did. Yes. Wait, last Friday I dropped what? Name dropped. Name. Oh, I name, name dropped. dropped. I name dropped. I thought you meant yeah. like I dropped off air. I buffered. I don't know what the hell. Oh, name um, drop. Okay. Yes, I've been doing a lot of name dropping recently. Yes. Um, last Friday I name dropped that I was having lunch with Landon Donovan. This was the same day that all the news was coming out about the potential of an MLS team to San Diego. So people have hit me up on Twitter and they're like, bro, Monday, you didn't even talk about this Landon Donovan lunch. What came from this, this lunch? I will tell you that in a matter of moments. I will. But before we get there, you talk about news. Earlier today, this is at around like 10 a.m. this morning, the news drops 
that the Brooklyn Nets have fired Steve Nash, their coach. <gasps> Shocker. Now I am shocked. Now we're not like like we talk basketball because you know I'm such a huge NBA fan, and I finally have gotten Alex and Browner to get on the NBA bandwagon. You know these guys didn't really Especially watch basketball. Browner. I mean, yeah. my God, Browner could care less about basketball. Um, what's that? What's that? You what's don't even that? know what that is, do you? Mm -mm. Yeah. Who they play for? So we talk about like we talk Lakers maybe a little Clippers, and then like storylines, like that idiot Kyrie Irving, you know, with his anti-Semitic posting recently, whatever. I, I, I really don't even pay attention to the guy. But earlier today, 10 a.m.-ish, the Nets fired Steve Nash, their head coach. Uh, you guys both giggled and said, shocker. Steve Nash, based on the, um, based on the statement that he released, to me, sounded like a guy who was like, oh, thank God. Oh, thank goodness you guys fired me. Gosh, I really appreciate that, Joseph Sy. Do me a favor. Um, just write me a check. I will gladly leave. I will say all kinds of wonderful things about the organization. I will wish you guys luck and thank goodness because I don't want to do this. This job sucks. These two guys in particular are completely, utterly uncoachable. And you know what? I don't care if you get Phil Jackson or freaking Red Auerbach, okay? These guys can't be coached. So I'm very happy to stop babysitting and leave. Thank you very much, Joseph Sy. Browner, what do you say about Steve Nash being fired by the Brooklyn Nets? Uh, I, I know Steve Nash. I'm not going to say how I know Steve Nash. What I will say is this. Good for both parties. Cause that wasn't working. That was never going to work. Kyrie Irving never respected Steve Nash at all. Zero, none, nada. And if the next coach, and this is going to sound terrible. No, no. I know what you're going to say, and I agree with you. If the next coach isn't a black man. Right. You will have the same problem right. with Kyrie Irving as your, as your second best player. I, I don't think Kevin Durant had much of anything to do with this. I just think that at this point, something had to be done because they're not good. I've seen... On what one of their games this year, their offense is grossly stagnant. They have no rhythm. They have no style of play. And it's just, it's bad to watch on defense. It's even worse to watch on offense. And you got two of the best players offensively in the NBA. So I don't think you can move forward with Kyrie Irving, period. I don't care who the coach is now. I would prefer Mark Jackson because at least Mark Jackson can get some respect from Kyrie Irving. Well, but I, well, listen, I mean, look, here's the thing. It's the exact same situation in L.A. with the Lakers. Russell Westbrook wouldn't even consider giving an ounce of respect to Frank Vogel. Not a, not even a, not a bit. Right. And Let me ask you a question before you keep going. Yeah. Now that, now that I'm seeing what they're doing with Darvin Ham, and I'm what I mean they, I mean the Lakers front office. Why would he? The Lakers well, gave him gave Frank Vogel absolutely zero control over that team. They yep. never let Frank Vogel coach that team. So if you're Russell Westbrook, why would I pay attention to you when I know who's calling the shots? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, if you were Frank Vogel and you were like, hey, Russ, um, see this right here? See this ring? I coached this team to a championship. And Russ would say, no, you really didn't. LeBron. Right. Did LeBron this is LeBron's team. And LeBron yep. led this team to a championship. And you were along for the ride little white man. So um, you didn't play in the NBA. Um, I don't respect you as a player. Um, at least Steve Nash had the um, resume as a great player in the NBA. Better than Kyrie Then Irvin. Some people might actually like respect him as a basketball man, but I agree right. with what you're saying, Browner. I honestly think that the well, reason Kyrie Darvin Ham. Nash didn't, like, never got a ring. Steve Nash was a two-time MVP and led one of the most revolutionary offenses in, in basketball in NBA history. He is a he was a far better player than Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving won a championship because LeBron James carried him to the championship and he made a shot. After that, Kyrie Irving has been nothing but a disappointment at every stop he's been at, period. Steve Nash was a great professional. He was a joy of a man, and he was a fantastic basketball player. Yeah, and a bad coach. 
Well, and a terrible coach. He's I mean, a terrible coach. Like before we even jump coach. into the actual details of everything, yeah. right. Steve Nash is a bad head basketball coach. Well, absolutely. Let's just, I agree. I just want to say one thing. Um, that may be true. Who knows? It's maybe, not the juicy stuff maybe, that we want to talk no, about. Though. Maybe right. maybe, he'll, maybe he'll eventually come right. back and be a good head coach. I don't know if he no. will or he won't. But here's what I will say. Um, Steve Nash went from never coaching anything in his life right. to being put on the bench of an organization that had ridiculous expectations and had big name value players. And again, I don't think anybody can coach these guys. I don't think I they're gotta coachable. I got to tell you, dude, I think the guy that looks the worst here, and you guys may not agree with me, is Sean Marks. They got his balls in a vice there. And when I mean they, I mean Steve Na uh, excuse me, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. They demanded to be traded. He begged them to come back. They demanded they fire Steve Nash. He refused to put up some sort of, I got a strong front. I do. I am the guy that runs the, the team here. When really, he has let them take over such control there. He is like festered. Mm -hmm this toxic culture in this Petri dish that is the Brooklyn Nets right now. Like, like Sean Marks has no control in that organization. None. No, well, you want to blame Joseph Cy, sure, he's the owner. You could always go, you could always go there. Shoot, I always blame Genie Buss, so I get it. But really, when you have a general manager that is supposed to call the shots and had this tumultuous offseason and demanded and wanted every single person to come back to run it back for whatever reason, a team that got bounced in the freaking first round, swept, he looks the worst here. And yeah. we can all say about Kyrie, we could all like let KD go under the radar for, for blame here too. The, Sean Marks let this happen. Well, I mean, again, I, I, would, I would blame Joseph Tsai above all because he's the guy that uh, gave these guys this money, gave this general manager this, you know, this payroll slash this, um, this autonomy to make decisions. The, the, the signing of Steve Nash, from the very beginning was dumb because yes. the players said, this is our guy who the hell listens to these players. I mean, you're but also said we didn't need a, we didn't need a coach. Right. Essentially we need right. a babysitter. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. we, we needed a former player who can just babysit us, but no one's going to mm -hmm. listen to a word he said, but I will just say that I think Brown is right from the very beginning, which is this. If you're going to attempt to reach Kyrie Irving, you have to look at what the Lakers have attempted to do. Mm -hmm. They're trying to reach Russell Westbrook and they got a, a coach who is first and foremost, a black man mm -hmm. who comes from a very underprivileged background, physically imposing, who, right. Who, who played in the NBA, but he wasn't a first round pick. He wasn't somebody's lottery pick. This brother had to work real hard for years to get into the NBA. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to be a successful player that, you don't know his name as a player, but if you look at his resume, you're like, wow, man, that's impressive. I hate this argument against Steve Nash. I get it for Frank Vogel. But you're talking about Steve Nash. Browner just said one of the most decorated point guards of all time. One of the most yes. successful point guards of all time. And that you're not going to yes. give that guy respect? Then you're not going to respect anybody that comes in there. Well, that's what I said I, that earlier. And you, you handpicked them. They're you handpicked that guy. They're uncoachable. <laughs> the problem. They're uncoachable Listen. humans. Not, not just talking uh, about players. They're uncoachable humans. They already are set in their ways, unwilling to adapt to their and, lifestyle that they've already chosen. And have been given have been given the power to say, this is the coach we want because we don't need to be coached. We just need somebody to sit on the bench and and you know occasionally call a timeout. They your point is well made, Alex, that you hate the argument because Steve Nash should have the basketball credibility to earn or to have these guys show him some respect. Vogel didn't have that for Westbrook. Heart, uh, Ham Westbrook is didn't a, have that for Vogel. Yeah. What did I say? Right. The other way around. It's fine. The other way okay. around. Um, Ham can say to Russell Westbrook, young brother, trust me. I am looking out for your best interest and I am looking out for the best interest of the team. And when Russell Westbrook hears Darvin Ham say that, he goes, This is an African American gentleman. This is a guy who played in the NBA. This is not some guy who grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth. This is a guy who had to work, work, work to get to where he's at. I respect the grind, whereas Westbrook never respected Vogel, even though Vogel had the ring. And the same goes for Kyrie Irving. No matter how much basketball credibility Steve Nash may have earned, Kyrie Irving was not going to respect him. Primarily, should, do I have to finish the sentence, Brown? Primarily. It's not that Kyrie Irving 
does, does it respect Steve Nash's basketball intellect? Kyrie Irving thinks he's smarter than everyone. And the underlining problem is you have to challenge Kyrie Irving as a man. The, and the, uh, the, also the problem is you cannot do that with Kevin Durant because he will curl up. Kevin Durant didn't like, didn't like Steve Kerr. So I don't know what you can do for him as a coach because he didn't like Steve Kerr, period. So you can't do now anything. that's Scott's point. I don't think you can't do anything to these guys. Cannot I, you cannot coach these guys. The only they, way that Kevin I mean, I, Durant can be, I would even put it in, in quotations, is coached, because I think it's a perception of being allowed to be coached, is when right. you surround him with players that are maybe better than him. And that was I'm not telling you that Ky, that Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Draymond are better than him. But they looked at him as equals, not a superior. So in Brooklyn, he is the alpha. Well, Even wait, there's, Kyrie there's knows more he's to the it. alpha. But there's more to it. If you have somebody like Steph Curry saying, Steve Kerr's our coach, and that's our guy, and I respect him, and I listen to him, and I, I'm being coached by him, that spreads the word in the locker room that our top guy follows his lead. Listen, LeBron James had a problem with Eric Spolster when he went to Miami. So try to get him fired. But, but the 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 Heat as an organization and Pat Riley and Dwayne Wade were like, no, this is our guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yep. if if you don't have if the coach doesn't have the support of a star, the coach is screwed. And Frank Vogel did not have LeBron support, and nobody supported Steve Nash. I think it's I think right. the Lakers are are a lot different. Then the Brooklyn, but they're in similar, like the players are similar as far as how they feel towards the coach, but the situations are totally different because the front office enabled Steve Nash to have a little bit of leeway, you know, in Brooklyn. In in LA, you we know now that Frank Vogel had zero autonomy there. Zero. They didn't let him do anything he wanted to do. They never let the, they never let him bench Westbrook. Dude, they had guys like, in the in, from the front office sitting in on his meetings. Yeah, like so, it's a completely different thing. Because if you're LeBron, if you're Russ, if you're AD, how am I going to respect my head coach when he's got zero power here? I know yeah. who's co I know who's the power here. Yeah. From a Brooklyn standpoint, I honestly believe that there are people out there who can coach that team and get a fair amount of respect from Kevin Durant and and everybody else will follow in line. I think there's Mark Jackson can do that. I think Patrick Ewing could do that, who coaches at Georgetown. There are a couple guys out there who would sit on that bench as their head coach, and they would respect him. Now, whether they would listen to him, I don't think Kyrie will listen to anybody. Kevin yeah. Durant will listen and respect somebody of that nature. I think the problem is Kyrie Irving has to go away. He has to go away. And I think something He's that got we're too like many not... things going. Something that gets which is different from russell westbrook by the way who just wants to play basketball the way he wants to play basketball that's fixable you can bring him off the bench take ad and lebron out and just let him do his thing for seven minutes that that's a basketball thing that's fixable something the that never gets that talked about brooklyn though dude like let's, let's be real if we're gonna get basketball -y, they have a terrible roster too like no la, LA, LA gets la gets like dumped on for having a terrible roster take you got KD and Kyrie, and that's it you got Joe Harris, you got Nick Claxton, you got Ben Simmons, who hasn't played in two years, but he will get it together. You got Seth Curry. You have you you have their roster is be way better than the Lakers roster. If you it's took bad those two roster. guys out, they would they would stomp the Lakers. Mm. It's a bad roster. Well, let's. I, but if you're I, like, I, I if disagree. you're okay, I know Mark Jackson will probably take any job in the world right now. Like, oh God, yeah, the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you, outside of Mark Jackson, if you are a respectable candidate. Why would you go there? Right well, now? right. I mean, listen. He made you don't go no, take that listen, job. Darvin Ham took the Lakers job. Yeah, let's add more drama to Brooklyn. Let's get no. let's hire Udoka. Hey, listen. That's that's <laughs> get, that's actually hide your wife. Actually, yeah, that's detail, a great just idea. Wait for, till the details come out there. No, no, let's I, I see there. But I do like the drama angle of that. Is is hire the guy who got fired by the Celtics or not fired, suspended? Hey, look. Yeah. Um. So little did we know coming into today's broadcast, we knew it was going to be abbreviated. We knew we were going to go into World Series action at the top of the hour at 4 o'clock, the pregame show. Um, but little did we know that this story would break earlier today. And the Steve Nash thing, just, just last thought on it real quick, is, is that Steve Nash, I've seen Steve in San Diego so many times because he would hang out with Steve Kerr. So, I mean, it would not be unusual at all to see Steve Nash and Steve Kerr having lunch at the Brigantine in Del Mar. 
I mean, I've run into those guys several times there. So, I mean, Steve Nash and this whole story of Brooklyn, if this were Indiana, uh, if this were Portland, you know, if, if this were, you know, smaller markets, nobody would care. But it's, it's similar in that you've got big, huge stars who people think should be championship caliber because you got these two great players, but you've got so much drama and you've got so much attitude and ego and two, two and five gets you fired. And by the way, I'm telling you, Steve Nash, his, his whole statement today, I wish the team good luck. Thank you to the size later. The, the, the Nashes are going to be cheering Bye. on the sideline. Pay me and let me go because this job sucks because these guys are uncoachable. These guys I suck. freaking hate this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All right. Well, man, well, big trades in the NFL now, Scott. All right. Well, let's get to that coming up. So uh, more keep coming down the, the waiver or the uh, news wire. All right. So welcome to the NBA. Well, hey, so here's the thing. Tr trade deadline today in the NFL, which normally doesn't really get a whole lot of action. But I think the Rams last year kind of changed that. And uh, already you're seeing some big trades like the Bears trading their best middle linebacker, their best defensive player, probably to Baltimore, who desperately needs the help. So we'll get into what's going on in the NFL trade deadline. And um, I wanted to talk about this Landon Donovan thing. Stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and crew on a Tuesday. Hey, great friends. What's happening? It's Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Abbreviated broadcast today from the radio side of things because at the top of the hour, we're going to hand off to ESPN Radio and they're going to have the pregame show. And then it's World Series Game Three, which was supposed to be last night, was postponed due to rain. And Alex, have you looked um, at the weather report in Philadelphia today by chance just to see what is expected? Are we looking at a potential, you know, further delay or, uh, or is this thing supposed to go today? Did you look, or did I haven't looked? I didn't. Uh, no, we're good. <laughs> we're good, as in, yeah. as in, like your iPhone says that it's all good. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Um, before we get into uh, where we we said we were going to get to, which is NFL trade deadline and things that are already happening from earlier in the day, um, we'll get there in one second. Before we do, fellas, um, Browner, you're going to have no interest in what I'm about to tell you, Alex. You're going to yes. be really interested in what I I'm want, about to tell you. I want it. Okay. So um, I had lunch on Friday of last week with Landon Donovan. And that was the same day that um, all this news was coming out about a potential MLS team to San Diego. And I really got to say, guys, I hope we do get an MLS team here. I do. Because even though I've not been to an LAFC game, I've not been to an LA Galaxy game, the LAFC is in the championship game of the MLS this Saturday, and they're hosting the game. Are you? Well, you can't go. You're getting married on Sunday. That's true. Gosh, I bet you want to go too, don't you? No, not actually. No, not particularly. But who are they playing? I don't know. You tell me. LA. I Cat. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I know it's they so beat Austin. <laughs> it's so funny because I honestly like don't know, and so I'm not going to fake all this excitement. But I will just say this. Wouldn't it be fun to have an MLS team in San Diego and Philadelphia? Like, Damn, enough winning, Philly. Dude, Philly's got the Phillies in the World Series. They got the best NFL football team, at least by record right now. And now that they've got their team in against the LAFC this upcoming Saturday. And I you know, Alex, on Thursday night, it's they got the World Series on Thursday night. And I believe the Eagles play Thursday night too. Alex, I have a chance to go to the game on Saturday, the LAFC game. And I'm like, do I really want to go? I've yes. not been to a game all year. And now the championship game yes. comes and I just show up. I'm there. I'm on the bandwagon. Really? Yes. I have uh, been to two MLS Cup finals in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I went when the Galaxy had David Beckham and I think Landon too. When they beat Houston at StubHub or whatever the heck it's called now. Mm-hmm. And I went in the lock. I, I actually had a credential and I was like, let's do this, you know, like an actual championship celebration. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. Like really, really fun. Incredible atmosphere. I think I recommend First of all, if you've never been to Bank of California Stadium, it's dope. It's tiny, but it's dope. The 3252s LAFC, LAFC supporter group. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. Every single game. And it's right there, right next to the Coliseum. Like, it's well, and I, well, I'm going to the Coliseum on Saturday to see USC play Cal. But I think the LAFC as a game, guest of who, as a guest of Mike Bone, the athletic director. There's another name drop. Wow. There. Yeah. Jeez, this guy is just man. What? Bag full of names. Oh, dude. So look what I just got in the mail. 
So I, I just received this in the mail today. I haven't even opened it. Okay. okay. I'll put you on the full screen. Okay. This is from LAFC. Okay. This is from LAFC. Yeah. Another uh, one? Western I Conference got two boxes final. coming my way. Uh, let's see. Following an incredible regular season that saw the LAFC secure its unprecedented second Supporters' Shield trophy in four years, the Los Angeles Football Club continues the 2022 Audi MLS Cup playoffs as a top seed. Blah, blah, blah. We invite you to come out. It's a blackout, whatever. This is all stuff that just came in the mail today. This is like a, they call it like an influencer package. Very nice. Little cute, little cute soccer ball. Now he's uh, an influencer, bro. Some, yeah, now I'm an influencer. A couple of LAFC stickers. Uh, like one of these, yeah. like, you know, like things you would wear with your lanyard. ticket, a lanyard. Um, what else is Get in to the here? good stuff. Uh, I don't know, like a little bracelet thingy. Very cool. Um, let's see. Scarf? This is, oh, oh, scarf, dude. Nice. Scarf. Dibsity, dibsity. Okay. Scarf. LAFC scarf. What's it say? What's it say? I don't know. Let's LA see. cap, Los Angeles. Oh, got to turn it around. Yeah. 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 LA. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles. And then on the back, it says what like. It says. What's it say? Repping the city. Repping the city. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Hey, All right. listen. Which city? Which city well, are you right repping? Right now, I'm repping the city that has the uh, team that's going into the championship. Can I tell you guys something? Wow. It's part of the mega um, market, Browner. I got to tell you guys something, and you won't believe me, but I swear this is absolutely 100% true. I have always tried to get into the MLS. I have been to LA Galaxy games. I've been to LAFC games. I have watched like Seattle Sounders versus Portland. I've really like I have put some effort into it. I've never given myself to a team because I have been waiting to see if San Diego would get one. Because there is no reason I shouldn't be a freaking Galaxy fan right now. They had David Beckham. They had Chicharito on their team right now. There's no reason I shouldn't be a Galaxy had fan. Had Landon Donovan. Had Landon Donovan. Yeah, but there's a statue of Landon Donovan in front of the stadium. I've been to the bunch of their games. They had Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Right. Like, yeah, there's no Zlatan. reason why I shouldn't be a Galaxy fan. And then LAFC came around, and I went, and I checked out a game. They got Carlos Vela, who is one of the best. Well, he doesn't play for Mexico because whatever. But And they, they just have marketed it so well. Will Ferrell is one of my favorite freaking comedian actors. He's the owner. Like, there's no reason why I shouldn't have picked a team by now. But I've been putting out hope that San Diego will get one. That's why well, I haven't fully invested. Are you going to tell me right now that Landon Donovan says that there's one coming? Okay, so here's what I'll, I'll say. Um, Landon didn't tell me, hey, everything we're about to talk about is off the record. He didn't say, don't go discuss this on the radio. But what I took away from the Landon Donovan lunch on Friday was that Landon and the ownership of the Loyal knew that this was being discussed and this was coming down. The question that I had for Landon is, well, what happens to the loyal? Do they get absorbed by the new team, the new MLS ownership? Do they completely go away? Um, you know, like what, what is going to happen? And to be truthful, like I, from what I took away from the conversation, I don't think anybody knows right now. I'm not sure anybody actually really knows if A, San Diego is definitely getting an MLS team. If B, it's going to be a partnership between this Egyptian billionaire and the Saquon people. And I suppose you get in business with the Saquon people because they're very active locally um, and they're kind of the, the San Diegans of the, of the squad, whereas these guys are probably like the big money and the international soccer types. Um, so I guess what I'm saying to you is, is that based on the lunch that I had with Landon on Friday, it's not like he was, he was like, yeah, definitely done deal happening. He was, I think I walked away from that lunch saying, we're not really sure we're on. We, we know what's happening. We are in the fold. This isn't something we read about in the news and we, we just heard about it. They're aware of what's going on. They've been in touch with whomever. And I'm hopeful. I think Landon probably is too, that all the work that the San Diego loyal has done as a USL team to cultivate a soccer fan base in San Diego, which obviously already has a very strong one that hopefully Landon would be involved and hopefully the ownership of the loyal would get a piece of this pie and become partners with this new group. So I would say, did you get a night? Did you get a reading from Landon? Because I would say from what he's shown, he's not a guy that sits back and reacts to things. Do you, did you get any sense that he's telling you this, but there's no way they're just waiting to see what happens. Oh, I would definitely say that I think that the ownership of the loyal is actively trying to become a partner yeah. with this club. Because the Galaxy, we're speaking of, of the LA teams, they have the LA Galaxy 2. 
and they play in the USL, right. which is the same league as the Loyal. Yes. I'm not telling you that's what I'm proposing for them, but I don't want to see the Loyal and the organization that they've built just go away. I, you know, agree. I feel like they've done such a good job here. They deserve, and let me just tell you something. Besides, you know, buying the, the insurrectionist, everything else has been really good. Dude, the, the, the ownership of the Loyal is not one guy. It's not one guy who invested his own money. There's a lot of people who put money into the Loyal thinking that eventually the Loyal would graduate to MLS and that their money would be four, five, ten times what they invested. It would be a terrible shame for the Loyal, who I said earlier, cultivated the soccer fan base. Look, we always know that people in San Diego love soccer. We know that because of the television ratings when there's international soccer matches on. San Diego is always a top three market from watching these games. You can also see 33,000 people you know, fill into, uh, into Snapdragon Stadium for a female professional soccer game in a league that is essentially brand new. People in San Diego love soccer. So for me, when the LAFC is in the championship this Saturday and they're sending me all this nice gear, which by the way, obviously Alex, I'll be handing off a lot of this stuff to you. This is a nice wedding gift. Don't you think Browner? This box make for a nice wedding gift on Sunday. Don't you think? No, you got a good big fella. Yeah, nice that. scarf. Little fella. He little, little fella scarf, now. little t-shirt action. No, you can't be dropping that. like Landon Donovan, Mike Bone, whoever else you can yeah. now, and then give me a, a free box that you got. Yeah, he can't be all this all this LA suite. You at the Rams mm -hmm. game and the suite, and you know, you all the taking care of you know dog, I'm gonna need like World that. Series ticket prices type gift from you. Well, I don't know about none of that. I don't know about none of that. <laughs> well, all I will say is a free box ain't gonna cut it. Well, I mean, what if I show up? I mean, you with, do got two of them. Yeah. But still. What if I show up with an LAFC box for Alex and then I get some sort of a gift bag from, you know, USC on Saturday night and then I show up to the wedding and I've got a USC gear and LAFC gear and I'm like, here you go, big fella. Here's your, your, I think, your, uh, your I think he got our, all the USC gear he needs. All right. I think when I'm thinking our reception, well, our gift table mm -hmm. is the size of an envelope that there only fits cash. Oh, got yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. So I don't know if you're going to be able to put it, it, nothing bags, else in the house bags and boxes on top of that, you know, that really rectangular envelope size table. Got it. Got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, listen, put a gift card in there. That's I, true. I, I, did, you, did you think that, though, that I think everybody's thinking the same thing? OK, so we're not sure what happens with the loyal. But did you get a vibe that this MLS thing is really it's going to happen? I didn't get that vibe at all. I didn't get the vibe that Landon was saying to me, dude, this is happening. It's a hundred percent done deal. And I know this because I've spoken to the commissioner of MLS and I'm telling you right now it's done. I don't think that at all. But what I do think is this, and I think this is pretty obvious to see if San Diego today had a world-class stadium, conceivably some point, somebody might actually be talking about putting an NFL team in it conceivably. Mm. My point is, is this, now that there is a legitimate place for an MLS team to play, that's why San Diego is much more attractive today than it was, say, four or five years ago, because there wasn't a facility for them to play in. But now that Snapdragon Stadium is built and operational, and you've seen 33,000 people squeeze into it for a soccer match, now the MLS is going, we love San Diego. We want to be in that market. It's awesome to have the Galaxy, um, the LAFC, and the, the San Diego, whatever you call them, and to have a pocket of Southern California soccer fans, um, I think that the because of Snapdragon Stadium, now it is more realistic than ever before for the MLS to come. And while Landon did not say to me, it's a done deal, it's happening, Landon definitely intimated that he and the ownership of the uh, Loyal have known about this and are trying actively to become a part of it. And you got to imagine... If you're talking about an Egyptian billionaire who was trying to purchase Chelsea FC, who's one of the biggest clubs in England, English soccer, they're not going to come in here and just be like, you know, hey, we'll sign a little lease from San Diego State. You know, they've no, already, in the no, UT, no, no, no. they're already talking about well, we're going to upgrade the, the visitor locker room. We got to upgrade. We're going to put canopies in. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. And I got to imagine San Diego State is probably begging for someone to come in and take that thing over. Like, yeah, San Diego State is not in the event coordinating world no i don't be, it'd be nice for them to have a partner right and i would say a, a majority a, a controlling partner, partner a controlling partner of a yeah. stadium i don't know about that part i don't know i'm not yeah. sure because i mean dude the mls they play 34 games a season that's just the league mm -hmm. they have cups they have other tournaments they have exhibitions i and then you have the wave in there you get the uh, mls team in there you get whatever else is in there it's like yeah yeah it becomes a it becomes a legitimate facility look all hey. i guess the whole start of this conversation is this 
I always say if you want big time sports, unfortunately now as a San Diegan, you have to go to LA other than the Padres and what they accomplished this year. If you want NFL, if you want NBA, if you want major league soccer, if you want NHL, you have to schlep to LA. Believe me, I did it. Yes. I did it Sunday for the Rams game. Um, I'm doing it this Saturday for this, the USC game. I may actually go to this LAFC game on Saturday now that I'm thinking about it. But if you want big time sports, you have to go to LA minus the Padres. If you could add an MLS team to San Diego, that would be a lot of fun. And, and I a know lot the of people would get behind it. A lot of people in the community would would push back and tell you that's your definition of big time sports. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what what other than the Padres, what am I missing? No, but I'm telling you, like if they do get an MLS team, that would be really huge for some people. Yeah. Soccer is really is that big to some people. I think some people. I'm not telling you the majority of the. Community. No, you're saying that people would say that MLS is not big time. How many times do we hear people say like, "I don't even watch the NFL anymore"? Well, I think I think San Diegans want to get behind San Diego teams, and I think they also want to get behind teams that play in the the highest levels. And if if the USL is not the highest level, and you've seen what the loyal have already been able to do in San Diego, uh, imagine what an MLS team could probably do here, especially if it wins. So. Probably could turn Browner into a soccer fan. Look, if you put a major league soccer, an MLS team anywhere in this city, I will become invested. I have no disrespect to Landon Donovan and the groundwork that he's put in for the loyal. By the way, he loves you because he was one, one of the things we talked about at lunch. He's like, how's your boy Browner? How's Browner? <laughs> like he, you're on his radar for all the stuff you talked earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. Good, good, man. I, I only want what's right. So I, I hope that they're a part of this, but you – I need big time. Yeah. I need big time, man. My money is my money is sparse, baby. All right. So, well, um, I got a I got a bust of browner here because we're gonna run out of time. I know. So before we do this, let me just I just want to welcome really quickly um to the show a new sponsor. Um, it's kind of an old sponsor, but it's sort of a new sponsor, and that's Penske San Diego. You know, for the last year and change, I've been talking about Mazda of Escondido, and it's a great dealership. And I have three cars from Mazda of Escondido, but Mazda is not everybody's favorite brand. The beauty of Penske San Diego, you know, Browner and I did this thing with Lexus of San Diego a few weeks ago, a few months ago. And um, I think the Penske people were like, why do we have Kaplan and crew only endorsing the Mazda dealer when we could have Kaplan and crew endorsing the entire ownership group? Listen, um, there are 12 dealerships around San Diego um, with nine brands. OK, uh, Acura, Audi, BMW, Honda, Lexus, Mini, Mazda, Mercedes, Benz and Toyota. Mini and Mazda are two separate things. Um, 12 San Diego area dealerships, nine exclusive brands, Penske, San Diego.com. That's Penske, San Diego.com. So if you're thinking about buying a car, Penske's got 12 dealerships and nine brands, including Mazda, Mercedes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, welcome to the show. Penske, San Diego, Penske, San Diego.com. All right, Alex, you said we were going to run out of time. Where were we going from here? Uh, I just want to say for the first time, and I think my entire life, uh, the Vikings own the NFC North, and this is very weird place to be right now. This is a very weird place oh, to be Lord. right now. What the, are you doing? The Packers stink. They have a losing yes. record. They're bad. Yeah. They, and here's why it's hilarious. The Bears traded their best defensive player, which isn't a surprise because they 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 weren't going to agree to an extension. I know that. They I'm not flipped trying, him. They I'm flipped not trying him to make that. it any bigger than it is, but the Bears are terrible, and they just traded their best defensive player. They flipped him. You mentioned they, that they flipped him. What do you well, mean by flipped did, him? They ended up trading for Chase Claypool today. But if you're there excited about Chase Claypool, then you haven't seen the past two years of Chase Claypool. Like That's that okay. dude ain't no better than whatever you got now. He's more interested in painting his face and dancing after a first down with the time running out in the playoff game than anything else. That's Secondly, okay. the Lions, who are terrible, always have been terrible, always will forever be terrible as long as they're owned by that family. True. They keep trading in the division. And they just gave us a top five tight end in TJ Hawkinson for nothing. All we did was swap picks. All we did was swap picks. You're saying Detroit and Minnesota made a trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Vikings got, they lost their tight end today. Who sucks? Irv Smith lost. He's out for like eight weeks, but he's terrible. Anyways, he can't catch. Mm -hmm. They just got TJ Hawkinson who is behind Kittle behind Kelsey. Waller's always hurt behind Andrews. And then Hawkinson as the best tight end in the league. And all they did was swap picks in the second round and a fourth round pick. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. This so, is a weird time to be a Vikings fan, uh, and I love it. All right. We got to get Kevin O'Connell on the show at some point. I don't want to jinx kind it. kind of coaching. I don't want to jinx it. Yeah. Um, can you go through what trades have already gone down? 
because you just mentioned um, Minnesota and Detroit. Yesterday, uh, the Bears started it off. They traded Roquan Smith to the Ravens. I don't know what they got. The second round they got pick. A, yeah, second and a fourth, fourth, I think. Round second and fifth, something like that. Uh, and earlier today, uh, the TJ Hawkinson was traded to the Vikings, like I just said. Just now, Chase Claypool was traded to the Bears for a second round pick. And where was Chase Claypool? Because I, I honestly, I got, okay, because I got to just say that name doesn't ring a bell for me. Yeah, Chase Claypool, the dude from Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he was on Pittsburgh. He's fallen way down the the pecking order there. Uh, and then news, just news in general. Colts fired their offensive coordinator. The Lions fired their defensive back coach. Yeah, it doesn't matter who the Lions fire. Yeah. Wow, it's man. It's all about grit. Hey, listen, you guys notice that today. <laughs> you kept taking here, here's, out. Here's, here's, the, here's my Browns t-shirt today because how about the way my Cleveland Browns Ham slammed the Cincinnati Bengals last night. Man, if the Browns don't lose that game earlier this season to the Jets, and if the Browns don't lose that game to the Chargers, the Browns are right there with the Ravens, and they're in the middle of all of this. But instead, they find ways to lose games. I was worried last night they might figure out a way to kind of screw that whole thing. It's funny up. how uh, yesterday the the Manning cast, they, were, they had Boomer Esiason on, and they were like, yeah, you know, how's what's Burrow going to do without Chase? And then uh, Esiason just goes, well, if Joe Burrow's really good. You know, I, I think he'll be just fine. No, and then not, not not so good yesterday. Yeah, then he wasn't. Then he wasn't. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Well, um, let me just say this: these are abbreviated broadcasts today. For those of you listening on ten ninety, reason being, top of the hour coming up in a matter of moments, we're going to hand things off to the World Series and ESPN oh, no. Radio. Uh, oh no, what? Well, not oh no, but according to Sham Sharania, Ime Udoka is the front runner to be the Brooklyn Nets head coach. Wow, told you. Way to pay that off here at the end. Told you. Well, um, anyway, my point was going to be we're heading towards the World Series. We're going to air the World Series here on 1090, so these become abbreviated broadcasts. Now, for everybody that's listening on 1090, if you want more of the show, come visit us on YouTube or on any of the audio podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Amazon Music, iHeart. We're there, and there's more show coming up. Now, 1090 listeners, we're handing off to the World Series. Enjoy it. For those of you that want more of Kaplan and crew, come to YouTube, come to the audio podcast, and we'll see everybody tonight on TV on Ch Channel 4 San Diego. Cox, your view. 1090 listeners from the from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, it's time for us to say peace out. We'll see you tomorrow. Everybody else, come hang out with us here on YouTube. Peace out, 1090 listeners. All right, so hey, listen, um, short shows this week. Actually, somewhat helpful for us because with Grande's wedding on Sunday mm – -hmm. And with me having to deal with like family related post divorce issues, and I I won't go too deep into it. Uh, but Browner, can you feel me on that? Just as a by the way, man, more than you ever could imagine. I got one coming in December. I mean, dog, I got. I, listen, this is the first one in November. The second one comes in December as well. Yeah, uh, and I mean, I'm broke, dude. Welcome to the party, I man. Mean, this is what happens. I it amazes me that when you're ultra rich, divorce can be amicable, like, like Tom, Tom Brady, Brady and Giselle. Hey, look, she's worth half a bill. I'm worth half a bill. Right. Let's cut it in half and go our separate ways right. and take care of our kids and, and have a nice life. Not a problem. You take Bruh, this house, didn't... I'll take this house. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all good. They didn't fight over no house. Right. They didn't fight over no car. Right. They didn't fight over the kids. Hey, you take this, I'll take this. Right. All right, everybody, let's go home. But when you're what? broke, but when you're broke, Yikes. you fight over nickels and dimes. Oh, pennies, brother. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So, so this short week kind of helps us out a little bit with Alex getting married on Sunday. And uh, Alex, you got me thinking maybe uh, this LAFC game, though, I think I think it's at one o'clock on Saturday. And then I think the USC games at like seven something at night. So I don't know if I can do like the full day. Plus, like it's me. My daughter's coming with me to the USC game. My girlfriend's coming. Now, if, I, if my daughter bails on me and goes, nah, I don't want to go. And if my girlfriend bails on me and says, I don't want to go. Now, all of a sudden, I'm going LAFC then into USC. Oh, okay. That would okay. be nice. That'd okay. be fun. Oh man, so this is not a, this is not a good wedding gift right here. This this LAFC box. It's, it's a good annoying. it's a good gift, but it's not a good yeah. wedding gift. No, I don't think Mar would. How about want two boxes? Two boxes of how, LAFC. How gear. is how is those two boxes going to help advance their life going forward? That's what a wedding gift is supposed to be. Oh. Oh yeah, just money. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> The chat was asking me to put the Venmo code on, and I was like, "No, nah, we're good. Thanks." <laughs> yeah, that's funny.
That is kind of funny though, that people do want to be nice, you know, like when you're, yeah, I appreciate like, it. I mean, it's like, I told you guys a story the other day. I'm down at this little, uh, this little breakfasty kind of place that's down here in Cardiff. It's called bump B U M P bump. And, uh, they do like cold brew coffees and they do regular coffees and they, they have no menu other than they sell these things empanadas, you know, and there's only three kinds. There's like or sausage, egg and cheese, bacon, egg and cheese, and then some kind of like chili relleno kind of deal. Right. So more of a vegetarian version. So they do. Three different styles of empanadas. There's an orange juice rack, which is really, really good. It's expensive, but it's good. Um, and then they do coffees. And when you pay them, they don't take tips. No tipping. And I'm like, you guys don't let us give you tips? I'm like, no, we don't do tips. That's the same thing with us. People in our business do tips, and we don't do tips on YouTube or on Twitch or, or put up Venmo things. People would like to give you gifts, though, Alex, for your wedding, and you're just not accepting them, huh? gifts no i mean we don't need anything dude like, no no, i don't mean i mean money like if, if you were oh. if you were a great friend and you love grande alejandro and you wanted yeah. to just give him 25 dollars, yeah. you know you're not i don't know that. like i don't know why i doesn't just feel it doesn't feel right yeah it feels cheesy doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah i appreciate about, the well wishes though like everyone's being super nice and i appreciate that and i do pass them along tomorrow but yeah i don't think i'll be putting the venmo code or anything i will tell you guys this if you really want to if you really want to be generous like that um, the one thing I would suggest is go to our merch shop on our website and buy those, buy those, that gear. Cause the money gets divided between these two fellas right here, you know? So whatever we generate, you know, $5 per item, whatever we generate, the money goes to these guys. This is like an end of the year kind of bonusy sort of a situation. Give it to me. You need that, huh? <laughs> put, a, put a, listen, put a Venmo code up for the end of the year blessings for John Brown, the defense fund. <laughs> the defense this, fund, this he said. Yeah. The, 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 what, the, the defense fund? Yeah, the John Brown and legal defense fund. That's what I'm like. Well, you know, you always say to me, you go, you go, you know, listen, um, I, cause I said to you guys a million times, well, the, the money that we generate from our merch sales, um, will be given to a local charity. And Browner has said, the Browner charity. Yeah. We're the charity now. And you, you are <laughs> yeah. the charity. Hey, dude, listen, I've always thought to myself, charity starts at home. Like I know it's a popular phrase, but the fact of the matter is this, we could generate a thousand dollars, $2,000, whatever it is in merch sales. And we could give that money to a great cause, but you know, listen, you guys work your asses off all year long mm -hmm. and, and whatever we generate in merch sales to me, that's, that's your money. That helps you guys. And listen, I would love to take a third of it, but nah, that's that. Even that's cheesy. Take you a third know? of it, dog. No, nah, dog. Hey, King. Knock yourself out. You hey, guys King. deserve it. No, you guys deserve that, listen, it. Listen, that's Uber money for you on the weekends. No, dude. That's, no, that's, that's, a, that's, a, few, that's a few Happy Meals for Browner right there. I'm looking at oh. the payout right now. Really? How are we doing? We got any cash in that account? Not a lot. Do you know they got adult Happy Meals now, man? I know. Adult Happy Meals. They are. They're always wow. sold out. Always. I don't Shout out to McDonald's. Be thinking on their feet innovation yeah all right listen to me um we gotta I know, go. I know we're late but do you think there's gonna be like a really big trade in the nfl today i don't it think was one already in, deadline in two hours i don't think so i don't think so because I, I don't think i don't think the rams can improve themselves enough to be a super bowl champion with any move that they make mm -hmm. but it wouldn't surprise me i will say this it wouldn't surprise me if the rams go out and try and get an offensive lineman i guess we already got the big trade mccaffrey yeah mccaffrey was a big deal you know? yeah that was huge yeah. All right. Listen, um, shorter shows this week. It, like I said, it, it's good for us because Alex is getting married on Sunday and I've got to deal with some family related divorce related stuff on Friday and uh, we're airing the World Series. But um, again, if you want to if you want to show this guy some love. OK. And he's not accepting cash gifts through Venmo. Buy the merch because the merch goes to the fellas, you know. I probably should have said that a long time ago. Maybe we would have sold a lot more, <laughs> you know, but I was like waiting for the pot. I don't know. It's stupid of me. All right. Listen, uh, much love to everybody. Support our great sponsors. We are back tomorrow. Peace out, everybody.